Okay, we're doing a work today on this Husqvarna. It's a YTH2148. And the concern is that these PTO switches keep burning up. Now this is one I just recently installed. Here's what's been happening. The knob pulls out. And one of these wire terminals has been melting off. I believe this middle one here. So something's getting it really hot. Now this one here, I've put it in, but I haven't done anything with it other than use it for testing. So if you're coming back here and you look and you got a plug back here, if this plug's starting to get hot and melt and you're starting to have these knobs pulling out, there's a reason that you're drawing too much current. Now, I noticed that this one does have a newer regulator, and he told me it had the stator, as far as like the alternator in there, replaced. Whether they was bad or not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the reason for that was. But the reason we're working on it is because it keeps burning this switch up. Okay, and see how that was getting really hot? First thing I did was I come down here, and this wire goes through the frame normally, through this grommet. Here's the other end of the clutch wire. It's back in here, zip tied to the frame. So I pulled these out so I could have access to them. But what I've done with this wire connected, okay, and one more thing here. See that black? There's a diode in this wire, so if you're ever looking for the diode, there is a few clutches I believe that might have it in it, but most of them are right on the tractor wiring side harness of the clutch plug in that black on the red wire. So what I've done was, with that hooked up, I put an amp clamp on here. And then with just the key on, I engage this new PTO switch. Okay. Now with it just sitting there running, this wire I had about 16 amps of power going across here and that's way too much. I believe somewhere in the range of 4 amps is the highest you want to go. Okay, now this clutch seemed to work fine, other than it was drawing too much and melting some wires. So with knowing that it had 16 amps of current, I got looking and this is an adjustable clutch. Let me see if I can show you that. Now not all clutches are adjustable, but there's a bolt here, or a nut here, there's one over here, and on the other one there's three of them on this. And if you do adjust these, you want to turn like a quarter of a turn on each one, you want to make sure they're all even. And you'd all see windows in the side like this. If you look, you can see the clutch disc, and there's a gap right here that you can take with a filler gauge. Now this one here, about 12 thousandths is what feels like what it is and I believe it's up to 15 thousandths if you get a high um, resistance and you got a large gap here sometimes you can adjust these and, and set your gap to make it right but this one feels alright as far as with a feeder gauge now Another test we can do is go over here and ohms test. Okay, I hope you guys can see that meter. Now you could take and turn the clutch on if you was having a um, no engagement problem. And you could test this red wire here for voltage. But we're going to take the leads from the clutch. And this is set on ohms. And we should be somewhere around 2.5 to 3.5 ohms if I'm right. And then we got zero. So, the way I've always been told, anything below 2.5 ohms is bad, and it could be a short in the coil that's in the clutch itself. So, here, like I say, you're testing this one with an ohms meter across these two leads. I don't even get no ohms. So, that's like a direct short. Now to get the clutch off, there's a bolt right here on the bottom that goes into the crankshaft. Now the problem with just using a wrench 
is the motor wants to turn. So if you're having to use a wrench, you'll have to find a way to stop the motor from turning. I like to put an impact on it and I'm spinning right off. But see here, the motor deck's sort of in the way. And I want to look up in the transaxle and clean all the crap and everything out of it anyway. It'd be a lot easier without this deck on there. So let's take this deck off of here. This is a 48 incher. You're usually not very hard. There's a, oh, we lost the light. This little clip right here, okay? And there'll be one exactly like it on the other side that we gotta pull them out. Oh, and there it is. Somewhere, right there it is. Now, also I like to put the motor deck all the way down so it's not hanging, the weight's on the ground. Now on the front, there's gonna be a pin right here. And on this one, they got it on the outside. And this one they've got it on the inside here. But it's the same kind of clip, you pull it, and then you can just pull these out. Might have to slide the motor deck over a little bit once I get the other clip out. We'll do that. Let me get this clip out, it's pushed all the way in. Okay, now with them two clips off, one there and one here, we should be able to slide this motor deck over and let these drop down. And that'll take the front out of the way. Now we're over here on the opposite side of the mower. And just like the first one we pulled out here, you got a clip right here that's got to be pulled out. See, it's really supposed to only go to here. They got it too far, which doesn't hurt nothing. But once you pull this clip out, this is what raises and lowers the deck. So once I get this one out, I can raise the arm up on the deck and these bars will come up out of the way. Okay, now after I get that one out, some of these have a bar to keep with them like sideways movement. There's also a clip right in the back of that that I'll have to pull out. I hate pulling these out because I keep hitting the camera. You can take a pair of pliers and put on these and jerk them out easier. Okay, now the hardest part is dragging this mower deck out of there without getting caught up on things. So just be careful when you drag it out that if you get hooked, look and see what you're hooked on. So I'm just gonna drag it out to the side over there. Okay, now our wire, it comes out on the left front side there. And there is gonna be a pin up in the top that's gonna come through this plate somewhere probably to hold it some spinning. So I got this up on a piece of wood just so it'd be easier to show you. And we'll just take this off. See now that clutch will just drop right off. So what I'm gonna do is hold the clutch up, pull the bolt out by hand, and I can let this down. Okay, I don't know if you can see this or not. Right here, what my finger's on is a pin. Right here. This is what goes down into that clutch to hold it from spinning. Okay, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but here's the new fan clutch and the ohms meter. If we stick these in here, we end up 3.1 ohms. So that's well within the range. If you remember right, we was directly shorted out on the other one. So what we got is a direct replacement clutch for it. So now remember the wire come out on that side and we're going to have to stick this back up in. If you look here, there's a notch and a notch. Those have got to line up also. And we can slide this up on the crank, put that bolt up through there, and snug her back down. Okay, now when you get this thing, the plug may not look like your connector, but they give you an adapter to make it like your connector. We'll plug that in. Then we're going to raise this up in there on that shaft and stick the bolt in but what I'm going to do is put a little bit of blue Loctite like on the threads and then we'll run that up in there. Okay that's looking up from the bottom right here by my finger on the inside I don't know if you can see that little nose sticking out and you got that keyway there that's what that lines up to. Now 
like the, instead of just running these in with an impact, I like to try to at least tighten them up enough that I know that we're up in there right where we're supposed to be. And that will snug it up with an impact. I'm not sure what the exact torque is. You can look that up if you want to torque the bolt. Okay, now we're going to turn the key on and pull this to a little over three, three and a half amps. And we got this amp clamp on this wire here. So that's a lot better than the 16 amps that we was pulling whenever um, we had the old clutch on here. So I believe this is going to fix that problem. Now the other thing is you want to what they call banish I think it is these clutches in just like you would brakes. You want to run it at like a half speed or something with no load on it just kick the PTO on run it for five ten minutes turn it off for five or ten minutes you want to do that three or four times and then I believe you should take it to a fast idle and do it. Um, two or three times like that before you ever put any strain of mowing with the new clutch on it because you want just to free wheel and get seated in okay, I don't know if you can hear me or not but what we're going to do now we got to run it we're going to pull this on for about 10 seconds and turn it off for 10 seconds do that about 5 times at about half throttle I did all that I let this thing run for about 10 minutes out there just by itself and this plug is not warm or anything right now so it looks like that's going to be a cure for the fix so just because the clutch works doesn't mean it's good <laughs> 